Hey, what's up everyone? This is Kim with allthingsdrawn.com. Just because you pass the exam to obtain your part 107, it doesn't stop there. Every 24 months, you must take the training required to keep your part 107 certification up to date. If you wait beyond that 24 months, you know, you're not gonna be valid. Um, so it's really easy, it's free, so why not go ahead and get it taken care of? This is only if you've already passed the initial Part 107 Aeronautical Knowledge Exam. That's the one where you had to pay a fee, go to a testing center. This is 24 months beyond that first initial test. You need to carve out about two to three hours for this training slash exam. I'm on the FAA's website. I'm gonna go here and you need to log in, create an account. Um, you should already have this. It's the FAA safety account. Um, so I'm logging in. And on the page one, this is where you're gonna go through the training, um, training overview. You have to satisfy all of these. Welcome. If you wish to continue to operate small unmanned aircraft systems in the National Airspace System, or NAS, under 14 CFR Part 107. So that is, in a nutshell, how the training um, looks. Like I said, it says to devote 20, or it says to devote maybe two hours to it. Some of the things I've noticed, because I took my test initially in 2020, there are things that are now on the recurrent tests that might not have been, you know, prior to 2021, which is night operations, flying over people and remote identification. And there's um, a lot of questions around like crew resource management, you know, it's like open book. So it is about 45 questions. You have to complete it or 90 minutes or less or start over. You must get 100% to pass the exam. So here are some sample questions, but you know, who's permitted to register, you know, the different roles of the remote pilot versus visual observer versus person manipulating the controls. You'll literally go over this in the training as well as there were test questions along through the training. And it wasn't that hard, it's open book. You have to get 100% scores. I think I got like a 90 something when I first hit submit and only because I was kind of rushing through and missed a question that wasn't even answered at all. So it wouldn't even let me like move forward until I got 100%. Not like it says, oh, you gotta exit out and start all over again. You can continue to work on those questions that you may have missed until you get 100%. So it's really easy, you know, once you do that part 107 initial exam, 24 months, you'll have to take this and things could have changed by then. The great thing is it's free online. Um, I know it used to be different where you used to have to pay a fee and then you used to have to go act into an actual testing center, but you can do this online. Don't stress about it. If you've been flying and you've been staying up to date with drone news and things like that, you can pass it. The information is right there. Um, just make sure you pay attention to the training and really learn because depending on when you got your initial exam, some of this stuff is going to be new to you. That's how you go and do your recurrent exam. Again, this is what you need to do 24 months after your initial um, aeronautical knowledge exam. You must do it every 24 months to stay current. Otherwise, you know, you forfeit being current. So why not take the extra steps to do this um, and stay up to date on all of the drone laws? If you wanna know about the initial part 107 exam, my experience, you know, how to schedule it, all that good stuff, check out this video in the description as well as it'll be in the right-hand corner of this video. Make sure you subscribe for drone news and drone tips. And if you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button and share it. Let me know if you have any other questions. And until then, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.